Everybody and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sport. Absolute disaster class from the Sharks, who uh, I think we've actually due to a last minute try uh, to make the score look a little bit better. Still managed to lose 38 points to 10 over Intreviso uh, to end what has been a very lackluster tour with another loss. Not enough in the tank and basically didn't rock up today. At all. Reynolds Smith, on the other hand, a bit of a Saffers abroad. Good news. Winning man of the match. He's got three tries in two games so far this season. Scoring a brace against the Sharks, who looked very, very poor. Uh, you know, against the Benson side, who have been very poor, to be honest. You know, And this was, for me, a big opportunity for the Sharks to demonstrate their quality. And they didn't do that. And uh, I don't think there can be any excuse about it as well. You know, yes, they're missing a bunch of spring blocks and stuff. But you look at the side they've got today. And I think nine capped Springboks, uh, plus a capped international in Dylan Richardson. Uh, that's excluding players like the Chutukas, for example, who are very much players of national interest, but didn't have, uh, you know, sort of passports. There's players like Faison Barton, for example, who's been part of the Springbok squad. Ethan Hooker, Sia who have been part of the Springbok squad. There was enough quality, in theory, in this uh, Sharks 23 to get a job done. And uh, they were completely outclassed from the get-go and uh, were held to just three points up until the 80th minute. So more pressure growing on John Plumtree because, you know, the season can't be won. The tournament can't be won in the first, uh, you know, couple of months, but it can definitely be be lost. And uh, the Shark side now find themselves, um, I think it's just six points from three games, six points out of possible 15. And uh, thankfully for them, we'll travel back to South Africa. But before we look at the, the game itself, please do smash a like on the video. Please do subscribe to the channel as well. A big note on that Benton scrum. Missing six props as well as having lost two of uh, so their two hookers coming into the season. And yet, we're really solid at scrum time. Uh, in fact, it was a scrum penalty early on in about the eighth minute that it actually really gave Benton some early momentum. Uh, they won a scrum penalty. It was actually a shark scrum. They then managed to get themselves into Sharks territory, won another penalty, and uh, that's when Jacob Umaga um, started uh, really taking shape uh, with his first penalty of the day. A phenomenal performance from him, uh, scoring a lot. I don't think he actually missed a conversion. Um, was some absolutely sublime. And to think at this Benton side, still get to get somebody like Thomas Albanor's back, shows you that they really are a lot better than what they have been in the early stages. So that was in about eight minutes. Um, Sharks managed to get one back about 10 minutes later with the, uh, through the boot of Sia Masuku to level things. Uh, not before they did lose Ethan Hooker to injury and uh, Francois Fenta replaced him very early. So not good news as a Sharks fan to see someone like Ethan Hooker going off uh, given the fact that you know they don't have a lot of their box around at the moment and now they're going to have to contend with potential injuries. Um, but things also started heating up in about the 23rd minute when Benton scored their first try. Um, had a nice line towards the right-hand side. And, uh, yeah, Jacob Umaga, just a long, long pass on the bounce to Adogu, who then had so much space in front of him and just pinned his ears back, basically, ran to the corner and went over, almost untouched. Uh, a really good um, conversion from Umaga, and uh, all of a sudden, you know, 10 points to 3 up. But the big thing, I think, from them, they didn't start there. Rainer Smith with a really nice try, a uh, couple of missed tackles, you know, really poor defensive effort, I think, in general from the Sharks. We'll look at the, some of the stats in a bit. But a couple of nice air offloads. Randall Smith going over his first try. Am I going to make no mistake? And uh, then, <clears throat> probably the big moment of the game. I mean, at that stage, you're sitting on sort of 15 points to three. You know, it's, I think it was actually in 17 points to three. So they had a 14-point advance. But you think the Sharks score next, they kind of stay in the game. They had a five-meter line, which they then lost. A couple of phases and uh, Nacho Brex, one of my favorite players, putting a thumping 50-22, was then taken quickly, really, really intelligent work um, from Ignacio Mendy, who then went over um, after that 50-22, that was about the 37th minute, and uh, so they went into half time at 22, I think it was 24 points to 3, and uh, then you're sort of looking at it going, that's a long way back, but if the Sharks score a start positively, and we've seen them sort of get better through the games so far this season, maybe they could not be able to find a bonus point of some sort. But an incredibly poor, but to a 25-minute period, Sharks knocking the ball on, um, you know, just making stupid mistakes, no really attacking shape, no sort of game plan, physical game plan, I think, is probably what a lot of fans will be worried about, is that it just doesn't seem to have much of a plan to try and break down that Benetton defense. In the 68th minute, um, there was finally the points in the second half, with Rainer Smith going over for his second, then a late try right towards the end for Leonardo and Marine, and after the Benetton were then reduced, 
two forty men after a, a high tackle on transfer fence by Ricardo Favretto um, and took a, um, took a going over uh, to make it thirty eight points to ten. Let's look at some of the stats, which kind of shows you, I think, uh, just you know what is concerning about the Sharks, mainly because I think that. The counter-attack for Benson was so good. Sharks actually had 63% of the territory while having 61% of the possession and couldn't score a try until they were, and Benson went down to 40 men in the 80th minute. So big, big worry there. Lance at 80%, scrums at 57% win. So set pieces, not good enough. And against Italian sides, as usual, what South African sides would probably really sort of target. They had more post-contact meters. They had almost uh, double the amount of ball carries, far more passes, for example, and yet couldn't find a way to score tries. Uh, 15 turnovers lost. They were so poor at retaining possession. A couple of, I mean, I think we saw Jacob Umaga take the ball off, I think it was in face of Barta, uh, or Kevin Richardson actually, actually. And it's the way that Benson managed to sort of just rob the ball from the Sharks players. Ball retention, absolutely terrible. Uh, and, I, and I think that's a big part of the game that they'll need to look at because you can't, yes, they had all these momentum, all the possession, all the territory, but when it really came down to it, when it actually mattered the most, they were losing ball far too easily and really, really poorly as well. Look at the individual performance. Ray Smith, phenomenal. Uh, two carries from him, two two tries. Looked really exciting with ball in hand. Uh, spare just thought for Jacob Umaga. What a game he had. Uh, controlled things, um, you know, kicked really well. The combination of Anesha Bricks and uh, Tommaso Melancello, probably arguably one of the combinations in the URC. I don't think you get much better. Maybe you look at the sort of the Hugh Pilato, Hugh Jones combination, the Gary Ringrose and uh, Robbie Henshaw combination in at Leinster. But I don't think after that, I don't think it's a better center combination. In fact, I, I think it's actually enough to argue that that is the best center combination in the URC and uh, looked really good once again today. It was a, you, it was the Benton side we've been waiting to see, to be honest, because they've been really poor in the opening few games. So they finally get themselves, uh, you know, a win under the belt, and that takes them, It's uh, should take them, uh, I think, about to... Uh, I think they should go about, about 12th or 11th, but in a run, that's sort of where Zebra is. Uh, but for the Sharks, yeah, I mean, that'll be six points after a uh, you know, potential 15. Not good when you consider they sort of the other South African sides, the likes of the Lions, looking to try and go 14, 15 out of 15. The Bulls in similar position. Storm is currently sitting with five, but uh, will play against Edinburgh very shortly. So Sharks at uh, risk of being a little left behind if uh, the other sort of results go the different ways this past weekend let me know what you thought about the game down in the comments below please do smash the like on the video please do subscribe to the channel as well thank you very much for watching my name is steve and i'll chat to you soon